Hello people, my name is Daniel Bowman. Our reading for today, for my thought of inspiration, is uh, found in uh, 1 Peter um, chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. My friends, do not be surprised at the terrible trouble which now comes to test you. Do not think that something strange is happening to you. But be happy that you are sharing in Yeshua's sufferings, that uh, you will be happy to, to, and full of joy when Yeshua, when Yeshua comes again in glory. When uh, people insult you because you follow Yeshua, you are blessed because the glorious spirit and the spirit of Yahweh is with you. Do not suffer for murder, theft, or any other crime, nor because you are trouble to other people. But if you suffer because you are a believer, follower, or some Bibles use Christians, do not be ashamed. Praise Yahweh because you wear the name. It is time for judgment. It, it is time for judgment to begin with Yahweh's family. <clears throat> and if judging begins with us, what will happen to those people who do not obey Yahweh's good news? Good news. Uh, of his name. Yeah, uh, it is very hard for good people to be saved. The wicked person and the sinner will surely be lost. So those who suffer as Yahweh wants should trust their souls to be faithful to the faithful creator as they continue to do what is right. Some people, uh, some virgins say, entrust the difficult situation to God and persevere so that he will be glorified in that last uh, section of the verse. We hear a lot of people who are supposed to believers or followers out telling us what we do. They know trouble is coming. They those say, let us band together my brothers and fight. Let's draw our swords and fight. We need to fight. I've taken a look at the posture and response of the Nazarene in the old countries. They were marched out in the sand, they knelt down and offered up their life, did not draw any sword, did not fight back, and their blood was a testimony against Isis. Isis would be found guilty, judged, and eradicated a life for a life. That's what the scripture says. Now we sit there as a world and we are troubled by ISIS. The minute that ISIS shed Netzeri blood on the sands and Jewish blood on the sands, they became condemned and will be judged. And those which are left alive will see as they too will spill their blood on the sand, a life for a life. In the meantime, what do we have, for example, all the way through scripture of what um, persecution is to be like? Daniel was thrown into dens of lions. Shazrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into fire. The prophets were drawn and quartered, stoned, beheaded. Many of the former believers were persecuted, thrown to lions, killed by soldiers crucified, burned alive, we have suffered. Paul experienced constant persecution, or show in our scripture. In Cephas, Peter wrote accordingly that all, all believers in all generations will suffer some form of trial and tribulation as a result of their faith in Messiah. During the Reformation, as well as the uh, protesting movement, lives were spent because people didn't want the global religion of Constantinianism. It is interesting that the reverse is now happening in today's world more than long for that globalization ministry to again unite all the faiths under one banner, but it is a false banner of compromise. 
there is no truth in it. <clears throat> we cannot adhere to such a doctrine. What are we going to do? How do we handle it? The scriptures gives us a clear indication that we simply raise it up. While some people are judged because they are uh, evil and they do things like uh, murder and theft and other crimes we hear it on the news, understand that your lives are being spent for the glory of Yahweh. Our, um, our name, their name, are written in a brief moment of history. Oh, Jack Frat stole today, blah, 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 police arrested him, he's in court. What do we hear a day, two days later? Frankie Manahi stole today, and Jack Frat is totally forgotten about. Thieves, liars, con men names look at all the senators in canada that were arrested and tried for for various uh, forms of corruption we don't hear from them except people like mike duffy which had to appear in court where's brazo where's uh pamela whatever her name was we don't hear from them anymore because their moment of fame is gone but there is a new name written in glory, and it will be yours, because you willingly lay down your life. If those wish to take up arms, particularly in the United States of America, let you caution you, my brothers, before you draw your guns and your swords and take up arms against your government. If you do so, you will be playing right into the hands of the Illuminatis and other councils which seek to destroy you. How? Because you draw your guns, your president will then deem that there's a revolution. He'll call out the militia and the army to quell the riots. Not that long ago, people like yourselves were asking, what's with these new FEMA camps? And what's with these new large trains? And why do they put barbed wire around these holding camps? You've had the answer, straight and foremost, from these lips as you're here talking to you right now. It is a move to crowd all of Christianity. We are to be arrested and branded. Don't give them an excuse to do away with your rights and freedoms. The President will simply with one stroke of pen declare martial law and abolish all freedoms, rights, and thereof and you'll be treated like traitors and shot down. You are a free man. You will make your choice. But you will not be entailed to anybody, including the Mashiach, when you appear before him to be judged according to your works and your thoughts and your values. No greater love is this than the man should lay down his life for his brothers. Except one cause, and one cause alone, is greater than the love for laying your life down for your brothers. Laying your life down for Mashiach is the ultimate goal. There are those who say in churches to teach you it's very simple to be following Yahweh. But in 1 Peter chapter 4 we read, It's known. It is very hard for a good person to be saved. It's not as simple as bowing your head and saying I'm sorry. It also requires repentance and change in our lives. Over the next decade or two, there's changes, changes coming to both Canada and the United States, and indeed the majority of North America. While people are acting in shock and surprise and say, what is going on? Donald Trump says, we need to shut off the Muslims until we find out what the hell is going on. Well, let you tell you, my friend Donald Trump. You may not remember me. I met you briefly in Vancouver, B.C. You didn't care what was going on at that time. 
nor would I disclose to you what is going on. I will tell you, this is endgame, my friend. <clears throat> Reality is, you have everybody sitting there going, what if Donald Trump gets elected? As president, he'll shut the door to all the Muslims coming in. We can't allow this. We'll have to let the moderates are being killed. We have to allow these people to come in and they're being killed. That person come in because they're being killed. I'm going to tell you guys something very silly about that thought and argument. Any person entering the United States has to be approved by their Senate. Every law has to go through Senate. So Donald Trump can say he's going to build a wall across Canada and the United States and across Mexico. But unless the cost is approved by Senate, it ain't going to happen. And the billions and billions and billions of dollars <coughs> would be better spent elsewhere. Donald Trump may make promises that he'll stop the immigration. But unless he gets approved by Senate, his words are no more than flapping sheets in the wind. If we find it hard to be saved, if we find it so hard ourselves to change and modify ourselves through true repentance, then you are guaranteed that the wicked people and the sinner are guaranteed lost. We need to bring the people back to Yahweh and turn to Yeshua. Nothing has affected this minister more than watching the martyrdom of my brothers. It's available on YouTube. It's available just about in old newsreels for ISIS marked 1,000 on Nazarene and cut off their heads. They follow with 800 Jews and 500 Christians. My comment was there. Behold, they have killed 1,000 of my brothers, 800 of my Jewish cousins, and nothing from the world was said. But they killed 500 Christians and were at war. There is a thought there of inequity, inequality. But I do not care about that. Because the smile on my brother's face as they died bore witness as to what it was really all about. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so, return to us. Adonai, Yeshua. Until next time, don't fall off to these insane idiots that want to grab guns and clubs and take up the revolution in the streets. This is not the path of Yahweh, and by his scripture, by the gospels, do these men claim to be following. Let us follow the paths of Yahweh, for his word is true. My life has been spent before it was born, and I will die with grace and dignity. Until next time, this is Dan Bowen for as long as I'm allowed to broadcast, giving the warning. If this video has touched you, please double click if it's on Facebook and watch it on YouTube. Share it with your friends, your neighbors, and your partners. Share it with your congregation and church. This is a message that needs to be preached. Behold the bridegroom coming. His return is quick. We are not ready, and we need to be made ready. Awake, awake, Zion, awake. Trim your lamps. Make his path straight. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Shalom.